There are a lot of things that happen in the Horus Heresy books, especially the new ones that changes quite a few underlining themes regarding the entire setting of the Grimdark storyline. Such things will be revealed in time, not just by us here in Nutbuck, but also by awesome 40k YouTubers across the platform like Amber King, Luden, Wes Hammer, Major Kill, Hell Even One Mind Syndicate and Scholars Lore. Mainly by them. They are more like veterans while we are a nascent new Dark Imperium founding chapter with just 15,000 Astartes in our ranks. Well, more like a small legion with 15 chapters, lol. Or maybe we don't follow the codex as... Uh, <clears throat> okay. Anyway, here in this video, we will showcase in short the seven different life stages of the God Emperor of Mankind, from his origins way back in the Stone Age, to what he will eventually become, maybe after 40k, maybe in 50k. So let's get to it. The New Man so it all began 50,000 years ago before the current setting, during the 8th millennium BC. The place was ancient Anatolia, which is modern day Turkey. By this time, humanity, as the last alleged creations of the old ones, had evolved to a point where quite a few of them have started to have connections to the warp, the first psychers. These were the shamans. And for some unknown reason, quite a lot of these people made a ritual and poured in all of their powers to a child that they state would be called the new man. For by this time, the immaterium had become twisted with demons and the chaos gods had began to take an interest in the nascent human race. The shamans lost their reincarnation powers at the same time, for they were the first perpetuals. And with their sacrifice, the child that would become the master of mankind was born a year later. So in a humble Neolithic settlement nestled in Anatolia, a child was born to ordinary parents, surrounded by the simplicity of herders and farmers. He had a family, siblings and neighbors. Little did they know that this child carried within him the destiny of mankind. From the moment of his conception, the child's burgeoning abilities started to begin to take shape and to shape his very essence, altering his genes and physiology in the womb of his mother and as he emerged into the world, it became clear that this child was unique. His presence seemed to radiate a strange energy, one that hinted at his destiny to transcend the limitations of mortality. At some point of time during the formative years, during his adolescence, his uncle murdered his father, in a story that parallels the tale of Cain and Abel. But the young boy who would be the emperor one day instantly knew the truth of his father's demise just by touching the skull. With resolve, he made his way to his uncle's home, and right there after presenting the skull of his father, the young boy just looked at his uncle, and the heart of the man stopped him dying with a sudden stroke. The boy watched with neither remorse nor with hatred at the death of his uncle. To him, this was something that needed to happen, the formative principle of his psyche that will last for the rest of his life. So as a wanderer and a silent guardian he became, witnessing the rise of empires, of innovation and the growth of humanity. For 38,000 years, the man who would become the emperor of mankind roamed the earth, observing and aiding humanity's progress. For not even one of the wisest of men over the countless generations could see this anonymous person, to see what he would become. Neither would they have any idea about his origins or the fact that he was a perpetual or his nature for that matter. Over the thousands and thousands of years, with great patience he watched over the development of the species, actively being a part of it, although in disguise. For at times he was a conqueror, a ruler of nations, at times he was an advisor to kings, a crusader, a warrior, a religious leader, a magician, a scientist, and even a messiah. But most of his time, he spent living the human experience. None but he knows the path that lay forth for the human species, one that he is guiding from behind the shadows. The third stage is as a witness. He was there when humanity first made their initial strides towards the stars, when humans colonized the moon, the soul system and beyond. All this time he was also growing with wisdom, strength and psychic power. Surprisingly, he was also there watching the rise of humanity into a golden age of technology, where they became one of the most powerful species in the galaxy signing peace treaties even with the Eldar and even the Orcs for that matter. Which is kinda shocking as Orcs don't have pens, never mind them being always ready for a fight. He saw the Men of Iron rebel, with even the fully sentient AI of humanity back then unable to detect his real presence. When the Dark Age of Technology crashed down 
and the birth of Slanesh simultaneously happen, the would-be emperor then decided that it was time for him to reveal his true nature and start rebuilding the world, humanity, to start in the latter part of the Age of Strife. He would begin with Terra itself. His fourth stage as the emperor, he would begin the creation of the custodies and calling in his perpetuals by his side, with Malkador being the right-hand man. He would begin with creating a template for a galaxy-spanning empire. This would start with the reunification wars on Terra and a subsequent alliance with Mars and the other planets within the star system, our solar system. The Emperor by this time has started to reveal his true greatness, not just by claiming his lost sons, the Primars from different star systems, but also leading the Great Crusade. His aim was to reunite the worlds of humanity across the galaxy into one single political entity under his rule and at the same time spreading the atheistic imperial truth, so as to starve the chaos gods of their powers. As an entity, he was still anonymous, with everyone seeing him as he wants them to see. To the masses and the primarchs, he appears in his majestic form clad in golden oramite armor. To the mechanicum, he was but a scientist. To the nulls, he looked like a normal man, and to others he would appear in a different form. Such is his powers of concealment that he had perfected over the thousands of years on Terra, being anonymous for almost the entire time. He was and still is the strongest Psyche ever conceived. His powers are beyond comprehension, with none being able to contest this. Well, all but one. There was one other that was the champion of all the four Chaos Gods at one time, Horus Lupercal during the Horus Heresy. The Fifth Form, The Dark King so this was a transient stage of his life that could have had universal ending effects. He almost became what the Eldar prophesied in their Harlequin's dance of the end and the death. He almost became the Dark King, the fifth Chaos God of Ruin. In the final stages of the Siege of Terra, the Emperor knew that Horus had become the pool of all the four Chaos Gods. The War Master had become, in a way, more powerful than him. Realizing victory was unlikely, the Emperor started to drink deeply from the warp from the Immaterium, starting to get unparalleled power to unleash on the battlefield. He then transformed into a lightning-sheathed sphere of obsidian, and in his wake, he inadvertently slew his own custodians, burning them to a crisp, sending even demons of all the Chaos Gods running away in fear and despair, because of his aura as he was becoming a god of ruin. And as the Emperor ascended towards becoming a full Chaos God, Malkador sensed his friends descend into corruption, but could not do anything. And it was only due to the confrontation by Ulanis Person, his oldest friend, with Person reminding the Emperor of his humanity, urging him to relinquish the power he had gained, even at the risk of humanity's future, did the Master of Mankind do it. Shocked by Person's presence and words, his oldest friend, the Emperor relented, shedding the mantle of the Dark King. His decision unleashed a blast of power that banished much of the warp madness spread by the traitors in and around Terra. The Dark King's ascendancy had been stalled, but it wasn't the end. The threat of the Dark King's rise still remained, awaiting its inevitable fulfillment in the future, like a prophecy waiting to be fulfilled. His sixth stage as the God Emperor. During the final stages of the Siege of Terra, the Emperor and Horus fought in the vengeful spirit, with Horus being obliterated and the Emperor being mortally wounded, which led to him being put on the Golden Throne as a makeshift life support system. Now, even as his imperial truth was spread amongst the stars, the atheistic belief system, it gradually became ironic that he was worshipped himself as a deity by quadrillions of people across the Imperium, their prayers feeding and giving him life giving life to the corpse on the golden throne, just as much as the thousands of psychers that are sacrificed each day to keep him alive and to light up the Astronomicon. But after the resurrection of Gilliman and his meeting with his father, it was found that the Emperor's state was highly incoherent. He was all over the place and even struggled to communicate properly. Gilliman was given mixed messages, he was called a lot of things, but then the Emperor finally revealed what he wanted him to be, what he wanted him to do. But be what it may, the fact still stands strong that the Emperor had become an entity that far surpasses anything in real space. He was, in a way, more powerful than what he was during the Horus Heresy. For when the Harlequins managed to infiltrate the Imperial Palace to confront the Emperor, 
Their psyche was bombarded by an unfathomable aura and presence. Even these Eldari were in awe of what the Emperor of Mankind had become. There was nothing else like him. But there he still sits, as an immobile supreme leader of humanity, whilst keeping the darkness at bay and shining a light, a guiding light to the void ships in the grim dark. The last stage, the theoretical ascended star child. So yeah, this is the last stage of the God Emperor's life. This is still but a theory. For when the master of mankind in his conviction to defeat Horus and save the Imperium during the Horus heresy, detached a part of himself that cared and empathized to give him the power or the conviction to kill Horus. The part of his soul that was cast away was called the Star Child. For over 11,000 years, it has been in the warp while he as a corpse in turn on the Golden Throne had been growing with psychic power beyond anyone's comprehension. With the Great Rift opening and the explosion of psychic power in the real space, the Emperor had begun to become more sentient again. But the last part of his life stage would depend on Rus and Valdor, both searching for the Tree of Life and his Star Child in the Warp. And if or when this shall come to pass, the Master of Mankind would transcend his present status and grow into a god, one that would be able to challenge the ruinous powers on equal footing. So those are the seven life stages of the God Emperor of Mankind in 40k, as per my understanding. Anyway, if you like this video, then check this other one as well. And if you want to browse for other Warhammer content, then check out our channel. Subscribe and like for support. Till the next time, take care, boys.